Hello and welcome back to my studio. It's Lois here from Lois and Morgana Davidson Art and today I'm sharing with you this demo from 2020. It's a tutorial showing you how I painted this beautiful beach scene. It's a scene from Cornwall, Senan Beach, which is a wonderful part of the country in the southwest. I love Cornwall. Morgana and I used to go surfing there years ago when she was growing up and so it was a regular haunt of ours. I hope you'll enjoy watching this as it's one of my favourite demos from 2020 but I'm afraid the quality is not quite as good as it could be. Um, I'm a bit of a technophobe so my um, equipment is always very basic and back in 2020 it was even more basic but I'm hoping that you'll really enjoy seeing the techniques that I'm showing here, um, ones that I will be revisiting again in future demos. I'm particularly happy with the summer sky, the water and the beach here and the contrast in the rocks and I hope that you'll enjoy watching how I created them in this demo. Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how I paint um, a summer beach. It's a Cornish scene. It's Senan Beach um, near Land's End and I'm using Saunders Waterford cold press paper, quarter imperial size, 140 pound weight and I'm going to draw a line across where I want my horizon and I'm going to use this art tape, I can't quite remember the name of it but I will put what it is in the description below. I'm going to put this across my horizon line because I want to make sure that my horizon line is really straight for this. making sure the tape is well stuck down across the edge then I should get a nice clean horizon. I've got a nice strong coffee so I'm good to go. I've wet the sky area, just the sky, all over and now I'm using a large Chinese haki brush to brush quite a thick mixture of cerulean blue across the top of the sky. I'm now going to use a small Ron Ranson Pro Art Harky, Harky brush to put in a little bit of raw sienna just to add a faint sunny glow to the sky and the clouds. And then back to the cerulean blue, I'm going to strengthen it up a bit more across the top and bring it down across the bottom. Keeping it nice and smooth, a little bit more across the top as gravity is pulling the paint downwards and therefore it's getting a little bit more diluted towards the top. I'm just going to use a clean damp brush just to take off the bead of water that's, um, that is, um, that's run down and rested on the top of the tape and I'm going to wipe off any paint from the tape with a tissue to make sure I don't get any run backs back into the sky. Now I'm using um, a one inch, a clean damp one inch flat brush and I'm going to take out some clouds. I've got a piece of kitchen towel or tissue in my hand and I'm scrubbing out paint, lifting it with the brush and then cleaning the brush off in the tissue and then going back again and carrying on um, and then cleaning the brush out again. It's important to do this because as you lift paint out of the clouds um, you're picking blue paint up on the brush and if you don't clean your brush off between passes then you'll end up putting the paint back in to the sky again and it could end up looking quite muddy. And I want some fairly nice sort of fluffy mare's tail type clouds I think if I can across the sky. I'm just using a little bit of paint that's on the brush just to flick out and give some smaller clouds nearer to the horizon. Then going back in with a very clean brush, hardly any moisture on it at all and just carrying on lifting out the clouds. Just wipe across the tape with a tissue just to make sure that there's um, there's no, no moisture on there at all and now I'm just going to carefully remove the tape and hope that I've got a nice clean horizon line. 
and yes that looks more or less exactly how I wanted it to look. Now the sky has to dry completely. It's totally dry now so now I'm going to draw in just lightly pencil in where I'm going to have my steep rocky headland leading down to the beach and then I'm just going to roughly mark in where the sweep of the beach is going to be and where my tide line will be too. Next I'm using a, a nice rich mixture of cerulean blue and I'm going to use the three quarter inch flat brush I think it is or a one inch flat brush and just draw it across the horizon line I want it fairly even across there and then bring it down breaking the line up making them more random as I come down closer, leaving white gaps for uh, the indication of waves and sea foam, etc. Now for the beach, I'm using, a, again, a rich mixture of raw sienna and a small harky brush just going to sweep it across the area that I want to be mostly sandy. Uh, the, around the bottom corners and the headland it's all going to be quite rocky but I want this nice yellow sandy area in the centre. Just putting it in quite randomly so that I end up with that uh, sort of texture too and bringing some of the sand up into that headland I'm going to continue to build up colour in the headland and the beach. There's some raw umber going in. And now I'm going to go in with Payne's Grey, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, various amounts, quite thick and rich, and build up some very strong tones all around the base of the headland and the beach on both corners. I want this area to look like it's in shadow from the cliffs that are out of sight um, and that will draw attention to the sunny beach, the sea and the sky hopefully. I also want to create rocks with the card, um, etching them out with the card um, so I'm using very rich thick paint because that's the most effective way to build up the paint in order to etch out with um, the corner of a plastic store card or you could use a palette knife or a pen knife, anything like that really. Plenty of nice dark paint in that corner because I don't want that corner to draw too much attention. As I say, the bottom corners are part of the, the framing device of the focal point of the beach, the water and the sky. Next I'm taking a piece that I've cut from a store card and I'm using the rounded corner and the sharp corners altern alternately to drag across the thick paint and try and create the look of boulders, stones, rocks and pebbles of different types, different shapes and different sizes all in together. Just trying to um, build up the shape of the beach how I want it to look. Um, what happens when you do this is you push the paint aside and it leaves um, a paler mark where you've scraped it away and that's then surrounded by the darker paint which gives the indication of shadows and suggests the form and the shape of rocks and boulders. I'm going back in now with a brush and dark paint to add more shadows underneath where I've scraped out and to emphasize the headlands a little bit more. 
backwards and forwards now really between the brush and the card this is where I'm trying to balance up the picture and now I'm going to put a little bit of grass, a suggestion of grass at the top of that um, headland there. Just so as the grassy top cliff top sort of runs into uh, the rocks and the sand and the stones. I'm just suggesting it really. making sure there's enough shadows in there too to tie it in with the beach and the rocks. Just going to pull the card through the damp sand just to add a bit more texture, a little bit more um, life and form just an indication of uh, maybe seaweed, rocks, things like that. It's nearly there now, I think. Yeah, I think I'm quite happy with that at the moment. Um, just a little bit of work to do on the water. My flat brush is clean and damp and I'm carefully going to drag it through the dry paint and lift out a fine white line so they kind of add some sort of lines of maybe sea spray dist in, the, in the distant water. If you want this to look even stronger you could dab it with a tissue now I'm just going to drag the brush backwards and forwards just using the tips just to add some more texture. Now with some fairly weak pale grey I'm just going to add some shadows of in, in, the, in, in the water just to kind of add a bit more um, sort of three dimensional dimensionality to it to the water as it as it as it comes as the waves lap into the beach now the last few touches I've just drawn in these two little islands this little group of islands just off off into the sea off Senan Beach and now I'm going to use a sort of brownish bluish mixture and I'm going to carefully paint those in. Quite distinctive landmark that you can see from Senan Beach. I'm using a, a small Chinese calligraphy brush for this because it's got a nice point. Right, that'll do, I think. And one last touch, I'm going to soft mask the sea in the sky, which means laying a piece of paper across it. And I'm just going to spatter some dark greyish brown spots across the beach, just to add a last little bit of texture across the sand. And I think that's it. I think that's about finished now. Um, I think it's time to remove the tape. When you remove masking tape, pull it away from the painting just in case um, it was to tear. Sometimes tape will tear, but if you're pulling the tape away from the painting, you won't tear the painting itself. I always like seeing the painting with a nice clean white border like this. I don't ever pre-stretch my paper. I find that with masking tape um, that once the, it, 
the painting dries, it completely flattens out anyway. Well, here's the finished painting and I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks so much to my patrons for your support. Without you, um, this channel wouldn't be possible. So if you like what you see and if you'd like to support me on Patreon, please follow the link below. All the materials, etc. should be listed in the description below too. Thanks so much. I'll see you again soon and take care then. Bye.